Season 12 has arrived and in this video I review the rank 10 players Lee Sin. If you're looking to improve your jungling or just want a new pick then this video is for you. The first thing you'll see on screen here is that they are looking for an invade with the Bliss Cranky. Flashes forward, throws out the hook, doesn't hit anyone and there is war going on. Lee Sin finds a Q, hits the second one and picks up a first blood. So let's see, how can you turn an early advantage into a snowball? You'll notice that with the first blood gold that Lee Sin secured, he has picked up a long sword for himself. That's pretty standard, but what you should be paying attention to here is why Lee Sin is starting red. Considering this is challenger, I assume Lee Sin knows that bot lane is going to be his weak side. He doesn't have any good gank set up there because Blitz lost his flash. So he's going to go look to impact the volatile matchup that is in the top lane. Looking at the map here, you can see that Lee Sin has pinged out where Nidalee has started. This is really important because it helps with your jungle tracking and lets you know if you have to counter gank or if you're not allowed to gank a lane. As for the pathing, you can see that Lee Sin's doing red raptors and he's gonna move on towards his top side. Now, Lee Sin is not a champion who wants to full clear. He's someone that wants to do five camps, three camps and look for ganks and impact the map. Speaking of ganks, you can see that Fiora and Camille are in the middle of the lane and with Camille's hookshot, they should easily be able to jump onto that Fiora and slap her around. You can see Lee Sin has skipped his blue buff here, he's doing his gromp and this is just because he wants to get that level 3 as soon as possible so he can go and make a play. Looking at the top lane again here, you can see that this is a prime opportunity for Lee Sin to gank, but instead he's gonna go look to 1v1 the Nidalee. We know she's gonna be on her red buff because we saw that she started on blue buff and she's pathing towards topside. Lee Sin has a long sword, Nidalee doesn't. She's gonna be using her abilities on this buff, smites it away, forces the flash, and he's having a big impact on the game now. This has just told all of his laners where Nidalee is, where she will be for the next few minutes, and he's in the perfect position here to come behind this Fiora and give her a kick in the face. Dashes onto the Camille here and it's just gonna be super easy. Hits the E, gives her an auto attack and that's a kill right there for Camille. He's gonna leave the wave here because Camille has teleport, she's low, she needs to get to base and get back to this lane. It's perfectly set up for her so he'll just move on to secure this crab. You'll notice on the map that our Camille didn't recall because she's an inter and Nidalee is threatening her recall. Of course Lee Sin's gonna come up here to cover so that they don't face any losses. He returns to his jungle here because there's nothing to currently do. Victor has probably just recalled and Camille has to catch the wave under the tower. What you need to take away from this is that when there's nothing to do, you just need to farm. Leeson hits the back button here because he knows what his first recall gold value is. When you're playing Lee Sin, that's usually going to be 875 or 1100 for your iron spike or pickaxe. After his recall, he's gonna move towards the bottom side because this is where his camps have respawned. Also, coincidentally, as we look down towards the bottom lane here, we can see that it's looking very gankable. Jin is looking very low on HP, so if Lee Sin just dashes on him, he's gonna send that Jin back to Fountain. Blitzcrank comes in with the flash hook, completely misses it again. Throw back to the start of the game, Lee Sin dashes in, throws out a Q, misses that as well. Kaiser hits the W, unlucky she doesn't have ulti. And this was a complete fail, but hopefully you can see the thought process there. That kill is far more valuable than his Krugs here, and they're just not going anywhere, unlike the Jin, who will be back to base soon. While there's nothing to do but farm, this is the perfect time to alert your teammates of where Nidalee is and solidify in your mind where she is on the map. So we just saw Nidalee on the top side of the map here and you can see that our LeBlanc is 50% HP. She is a prime target to get ganked. So what's Lee Sin gonna do? He's gonna come, drop a ward for his mid laner and hover. He wants Nidalee to come here. They want a 2v2 because they would win that with Lee Sin's lead. Instead of being AFK here, he's gonna check the Raptors, get the timer, and he's gonna be looking out at the mid lane to see if they can gank the victor. This is an immobile mage, and if LeBlanc dashes on him, she can chain him up, and that's perfect setup there right there for the Lee Sin Q, and another kill picked up right there. You'll see LeBlanc is really low here, so instead of going to his own jungle immediately, he's going to help her get this wave in. He doesn't wanna leave her exposed to the threat of an Italy gank. And once again, while there's nothing to do, Lee Sin is just gonna farm and continue looking for the next opportunity. Speaking of opportunity here, you can see that Fiora is really pushed up in the top lane. She's low on resources, she wants to get this wave and get to base. Camille with the hook shot, what did we say earlier? All Lee Sin has to do is dash in here, smack her, and she's back to Fountain. Since Camille doesn't have TP this time, he's gonna help her get the wave in so she can have a good recall, as this wave would be quite difficult to freeze for her.
this is why map awareness is so important. You can see Victor immobile mid, he's very far up trying to crash a wave. Leeson shows up, LeBlanc can easily dash onto him, hit him with the chains, and then as soon as the Leeson queue is up, that's going straight onto him and kick him to fountain. Speaking of map awareness, you can see here on the bottom side that Nidalee is low on HP. If Lee Sin lands the Q here, this should be a quick, easy pickup. Doesn't throw it out, opts against it, so it's back to farming for him, as there's currently nothing to do and he wants to get that Gore Drinker on his next recall. Observe and you will see that Lee Sin has the perfect amount of gold here to buy his Gore Drinker and control wards. He has no camps on the bottom side, so of course he's gonna go towards top side where his camps are up. While there's nothing to do, he'll farm his camps as standard procedure. But as soon as we see a wave that we can pick up or just potentially wait for that Camille to get back into lane and gank that Fiora, he is on the move to try and make it happen. As soon as the play disappears, he's out, he's gonna go back to farming. He's not looking to waste any time at all. There's nothing to farm right now, so all there really is to do is either look for a gank, a counter gank, or an invade with his mid lane priority, or even a dive if the opportunity presents itself. You'll see here Victor is in a mobile mage, Leeson hits the Q, Ward hops, knocks him into his LeBlanc, and that's just gonna be an easy one shot for them. Easy pickup, and he's looking straight away for Nidalee's Raptors, he's not running back to his own jungle like the majority of you would. He's looking to take from the enemy and get even further ahead. Sees his LeBlanc is getting ganked and he's on the run to go protect her. And of course LeBlanc wants to recall after picking up a kill on the victor and being in lane for so long. She's also really low on HP so he's just gonna help push that wave in for her. Now pay attention here, you can see that Leeson has two camps on the bottom side that he could go farm, but this Leeson is smarter than that, he sees that this wave is bouncing towards Camille's side, Fiora is half health, we know Nidalee's on her way up, this is the perfect opportunity to go play with our top laner who's winning and turn this situation around completely, whiffs his Q, just dashes onto the Camille and nothing is gonna result from this unfortunately. But if Nidalee hadn't shown up here, they would have easily picked off the Fiora or at least zoned her off of a few waves. Harold's charging up, it's gonna crash in and he hits the Q looking for the Nidalee. He knows he's strong, he's got a full Gore Drinker already while Nidalee's still looking to complete her first item. Pops her, looking for the Fiora, she flashes away, LeBlanc is on the way there, the chains. She does parry them, but that's perfect setup for Leeson to hit his second Q. Flashes in because he wants that kill. Lets it tick away to LeBlanc and perfect two kill pick up there. Anyway, it does work out in the end. And again, he's looking to take the enemy camps. He's not looking to run away to his own jungle like a scaredy cat. He's looking to take from the enemy and get ahead. And I'd assume he'll even try break this tower down now with the Camille to get even more gold and even stronger. Looks like he leaves a bit of gold for the Camille, he doesn't want to be the only strong player on his team, but if this is in lower elo, you definitely want to be taking that gold for yourself. If Leeson had a ward hop here, he'd definitely be looking to gank that victor in the mid lane instead of farming his gromp. Like before, he recalls to go back to his bottom side where his camps are up. Spots out this fight in the bottom lane and he is there looking to participate immediately, looking to ward hop and kick that gin and pick up even more gold for himself. Since the ADC is playing Grey Screen Simulator, Leeson's just gonna get this wave in by himself and not let this gold go to waste. They just wanna fight on the bottom side, so this is quite a good opportunity to start up the dragon, as Nidalee is on the top side right now, and there's no risk of getting collapsed on. Leeson's being really sneaky right here, he knows he's super strong 5, 1 and 4, and if he finds this Jin, he'll be able to destroy the bottom lane tower, but Unfortunately, it doesn't go to plan because he does show up in the middle lane and we are officially into the mid game with the first tower fallen. Whenever you're unsure of where to go, you can just walk down the middle lane and then make your decision. He has two camps on bot and top, but of course action is going on in the middle lane and he's unsure of where to go. Grump is respawning, so he has more camps on the top side, so of course he will go farm that side. They spot Fiora out on a ward and they're looking to hunt her down. Of course, she just goes over the wall, back to safety, and nothing's really gonna come to fruition here, but Leeson is looking to go into the enemy jungle. He's seeking her out. He has backup, he has Blitzcrank and LeBlanc behind him, so he's trying to find a fight. Camille's in the top lane, you can see 
everyone is around. He's not just going for a blind invade like most players would. He's trying to see if he can actually do something. Furo dashes away the Q and it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. But what matters here is the intent and the fact that unlike most players, he is not forcing a situation here. He is simply playing with his priority and his laners so he can have a favorable situation. There's a fight going on in the middle lane here and Lee Sin is super committed to the Herald already. He's taken it down to half HP and he doesn't deem it necessary to move for this fight. He wouldn't be here anyway. But just know that in most scenarios, you want to move to the fights. Winning fights is what actually allows you to win the game. Drops the Herald here because there are two enemies dead and this should be able to easily break two if not three towers if they can manage to find even more kills. And you'll see here he's in position for a flank angle, he's got flash, he's got kick, he's also in position here to catch out Fiora if she's on the rotate. Everyone's grouped up in the mid lane, they're looking to siege, they're looking for more, they want to protect this Herald and get a third crash, LeBlanc is looking for an engage. Completely whiffs everything, unfortunately, looks like this Herald will get taken down, but hopefully you can see the value there. You don't want to drop this for just one tower, you want to always be looking for two or three or at least hold it for a better situation if you have the control wards. But here you can see Blitzcrank has finally found a hook this game, gets the Nidley, Lee Sin is in there straight away with the ward hop and the enemy team just got massacred. So this should open up the inhibitor and it looks like they're in a very good spot right now in this game. The fundamentals from this Lee Sin have allowed him to get to the stage. The jungle tracking, the gank analysis, the map awareness, all of this has led to this point. And of course, they're going to leave the inhibitor here because it's only 17 minutes. If they take it out, they're just going to be funneling the enemy team gold. And of course, on the return from the enemy base, they're looking to see if there are any camps available. Nothing available. Back to base and rinse and repeat. Leeson knows that he has the lead, he knows that his whole team has a lead and this tower is very low. If they get onto this Fiora, they'll just give that tower one auto attack as you saw and she's just gonna go down. Here comes Jin and Yumi trying to do something as if they can. Blitzcrank on the way, Gale Force does come out, whiffs the hook again, Camille with the hook shot completely misses. Does at least hit the fist there, knocks her up and will they find a Nidalee there? It's a bit risky, doesn't want to give away that bounty and uh, rightly so, you don't want to be throwing games with bounties. Camille whiffing the Hulk shot there actually does hit someone. They do find a pick here and Dragon's going to be spawning soon. And you can just see the tremendous impact of this Lee Sin. Everywhere he goes, there's a play. Every time he shows up, it's a kill. It's a camp that's taken away from the enemy. Blue buff is being secured here and it's going to be the dragon next. And you can just see the tremendous impact he's having. Victor stepping up for some reason, surrounded by four people. No TP is going to be saving you here. Yumi, where are you going? She does get out. But this Fiora, there's not a chance. Lee Sin does hit the Q. Flash kick, there it is. And th this Fiora is just gone. So there's just no way out and you can see ridiculous amount of impact that this Lee Sin is having this game four kills right there that's going to be the dragon probably into the Baron and the game end very soon here we see Blitzcrank again looking to miss a few hooks there it is completely whiffs it Lee Sin also looking to get in here and engage they know they have the lead all they have to do is fight secure that Baron and end the game and LeBlanc has found something there goes Lee Sin with the Q again and here we go that is an ace for this team and looks like that's just gonna be the game end right there I don't think they're gonna even need the Baron to end this one Anyway, I hope you did learn something from this one. Let me know if you found those Blitzcrank hooks funny this game. Completely missed them all.